All right, welcome back, Southwest Florida. We're cranking it out this, this, this ho during the holiday season. We have a renowned flutist and educator here, and we're delighted to have him in the studio, Gay Lynn. Welcome to the show, Gay Lynn. Thank you very much. Hey, man, Lee. let's get your cup over here. Yes, now, let's do the traditional bump. You better believe it. Now, Gay Lynn, first of all, when I say renowned, you're, you're beyond renowned. You've actually traveled the world. Your flute has allowed you to make a living and see the world at the same time. Kind exactly. Expound on that for our viewers. Exactly. Well, I had the opportunity very recently uh, for the third time to be in London and Paris and in Brussels. I did uh, three performances there uh, in November of 2012. And I'm due to go back again in the very near future, in a few weeks. Excellent. Now, people here in Florida have gotten a chance to see you, particularly as you've done some work with Hodges University, right. put on some great jazz uh, concerts, and I got a chance to see you perform personally. One of the things I noticed within your uh, playing of the music that I've never seen, you actually educate people about the history of jazz. Tell me how that whole concept came about. Sure. It is so important for people to know who these uh, great musicians are and were. It's almost like having an entire culture just wiped out if people don't know who were these great men and women. Because a lot of times, women weren't even getting the credit that they deserve. Mm -hmm. And I like to highlight these people because it's so important. Uh, people will often listen to music and they'll just say, well, sure, that's elevator music. This is just somebody. But those somebodies are those who took the time to learn their craft, so it's so important. And jazz is is one of America's uh, is it come from America. It's what uh, it's America's contribution to the arts. That's right. It's America's original music. This music was born and bred here by African Americans. So it's very important that people know that as well. Now tell us about your background. You're not just a guy who picked up the flute. Not no. that a person who just picked up the flute, like say Charlie Parker or whatever, couldn't no. exist. But sure. you actually have some formal training. I have. Uh, talk about that. I have. I attended Berklee College of Music in Boston, and uh, I also graduated Rutgers University with a master's degree in composing and education. And I taught public school for a number of years, and then I went on the road with John Amos, with Melba Moore, and with some other people, and I decided just to go for it with uh, for, for myself, actually, with a band and so forth. So. Now, now, you're a good-looking guy, and we like hearing you talk and all of that, but we didn't bring you here for that. We want to hear you play. What's the first thing we're going to take a look at? The first composition <laughs> is a composition that I wrote for my wonderful wife of 30 years. Uh, her name is Fiona, and the name of this one is entitled Fee and Me. Okay, let's take a look, Rick.
Now, is Lee Pitt Live taking care of you or what? Now, where are you going to get this kind of stuff on a Sunday morning? When I say stuff, I mean a great flutist historian right here on Lee Pitt Live playing and talking to us. Uh, you can, uh, the contact information for Galen is on the screen if you want to get in touch with him. He's, he comes out, he plays at different events. He can play at the Carnegie Hall if we need him to play there. Just go to his website, his Facebook page, and, and, and connect with Galen. And also, of course, you can reach me at Leapis Live. I'll hook you up. I know Galen personally, right? <laughs> you sure do. Now, Galen, talk about the first time you picked up the flute. How did you first get into the whole aspect of being a musician? Sure. Well, actually, flute wasn't my first love. Drums were my first love. But my parents told me that they would not allow any drums in the house. Okay. So my mother actually said, well, why don't you play something a little softer? <laughs> so, and that was the flute. And when I heard the flute, just a beautiful instrument. So that's, and that was in 1959. Now, when we use the, the word flute, now me, yes. a novice, sure. I see people playing, they'll play different types of flutes, and they may even have a saxophone there. Sure. Are the people who play these types of instruments kind of cross-pollinated? You can pick up pretty much That's any of those things you blow in? Right, right. Go ahead. Well, actually, I am exclusively a flute player, mm -hmm. flute and piccolo. For a while, I played the saxophone, but in the baritone, to be exact, there are four or five different saxophones. But I played the baritone, but flute is my principal instrument, and that's the only instrument I'll talk Now, how much did you have to sacrifice? And I want people to know this. You don't sure. just walk around playing like you play. As a child, as a teenager, you had to sacrifice a lot of things. You were in that room when everybody else was running around playing sports or whatever. You, you missed out on a lot. Let's talk about the importance of making that sacrifice to become what you are today. Sure. I was teased often by being a, a male flute player because I was in a row with all the girls. And so, and now I'm that's a, not, that's a good location. Go yeah, there it is. <laughs> but then, of course, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big guy. And then when I was younger, I had girth, too. So it was like, why aren't you, why aren't you out on that, on that gridiron? And, and I said, no, I need to play this flute. So, mm -hmm. yes, it was a sacrifice. And then now when we look at you now, you're able to educate other people. Exactly. Let's take a look at what we're going to look at now, moaning. Yes, moaning. Let's take a look.
Okay, South Florida, tell people if you're missing Lee Pitts Live, this is the type of information and people that you miss on Galen on the flute. Galen, the uh, one final question. Uh, tell us the types of venues and events that if people are interested in contacting you that you play. Sure. I play colleges and universities exclusively. I also do conferences. I do festivals. Um, I do those type of things. I do some clubs, but most of my work is at the college and university uh, level. Okay. Now, do you have to be like a, a jazz expert to appreciate you? No, not at all. <laughs> okay. Not at all. All so, right, man. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. and look forward here. to getting you back in the future. Same here, Lee. Thank you very much. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay, stay right there. Mm -hmm. As the saying goes on this particular show, for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like Galen, the great flute and flutist and historian.